All right, this is the uh, Game Watcher camera control board that um, I make and sell. And the purpose of this control board is to operate um, homebrew or homemade trail cameras um, for capturing photos and videos of wildlife. All right, and this control board, um, the way it's set up today is uh, powered by three AA batteries uh, for the power source. Comes with a on and off toggle switch here that will, you know, can turn the power on to the board. And the microchip is a Pickaxe 14M2, which is here. Okay, this board also has a sensitivity adjustment um, that can be dialed down um, counterclockwise. To decrease sensitivity or turn clockwise to increase sensitivity and I normally ship them out with it set to about the one o'clock position okay um, if you need to decrease it a little bit because you're getting too many false triggers uh, you could turn it down slightly maybe to 12 o'clock you know and see how that works for you or if you feel like it needs to be increased a little bit um, turn it clockwise to maybe around two o'clock um, just make minor adjustments on it to uh, get it to where it's to your liking okay um, this control board also comes with two opto couplers on it for outputs um, you could operate um, two cameras sim simultaneously or uh, use one opto to operate a camera and the other opto you know for other peripherals that you may want to do if you do your own programming all right has dip switches here depending on the program that you uh select uh you can set the dip switches to operate uh, either different cameras or different functions that you want such as 24 hour uh, still photos or video or uh, daytime only or nighttime only just depending on the program that you uh, have all right uh, on the bottom of the board there's a PR sensor and um, an LDR which detects the light level so that the board will know if it's day or night and it also has an LED all right um, there's also a uh, mounting plate on the bottom that you can uh, take off and use as a guide for uh, marking out where you need to drill a one inch hole in your case to mount your Fresnel lens and um, you know you can also drill the holes for the mounting screws if you want to run your screws through through your case and then uh, mount this back to the board the way it is okay and this gives you the uh, perfect distance the, the PR face of the PR needs to be set okay with these standoffs all right uh, most cameras are going to be uh, three wire hacks where you have a power and a common or earth and then a shutter and for those cameras um, jumper JP2 on the bottom of the board uh, which is under this side would need to be bridged with a solder bridge and then to connect your wires to the board um, and like I said this one is set up for a Nikon DSLR so in order to connect the camera to the board with the programming I have you would need to connect your metering wire into terminal P and which is the third from the left um, starting at this corner uh, would be terminal P and then your ground or earth wire would connect into terminal PC which is the next to the left and then the shutter wire would connect into terminal S which is next to the last to the left okay uh, there's a couple other um, outputs that you could use coming from the second opto which is terminal one which is here one further to the right and then terminal two which is on this screw terminal here and you'll also notice that there's um, a 2c 
and a 1C. You know, depending on your application uh, as to whether you need to use those terminals or not. And um, there's extra jumpers on the bottom of the board designated as JP5 and JP6 that may or may not need to be set depending on uh, your application. All right. Um, if you want to do your own programming, depending on your specific application, you will need a program extension cable for your pickaxe serial cable. And uh, that's what I make here. Uh, so that it's got a stereo jack here. And your pickaxe cable would plug directly into here. And then the other part, other end of the cable, looks like this. Okay, and in order to connect it to the board, there's a program header located here, and this tab on the program extension cable would need to face in towards the center of the board so that it clips on in this configuration. I'm going to spin it around so you can see that. You see the white tab on the extension cable is to the inside of the board. And that connects your serial in, serial out, and grounds in the proper orientation for it to uh, accept new downloads to the microchip. All right, now for the uh, operation of the board. Normally, I have a um, walk test or a test loop mode, and what that will do is when you first power the control board on, let me turn on the toggle switch. And the LED will light up for just a second or so. All right, and then you let that control board sit. And if it detects any motion within 30 seconds, the LED will come on, go back off, and that restarts the test loop or walk test um, for an additional 30 seconds. If the board sits idle and there's no motion detected, for 30 seconds the LED will flash eight times at the end of the 30 second period and that will let you know that the walk test has completed the board is now armed and ready to activate your camera when there is motion detected so I'm going to let that go through the walk test and you should be able to see there it goes the LED is flashing several times so after that the LED will not flash anymore but if there was motion activation um, you know, detected, then it would activate your camera to come on and start taking video or take still pictures, whichever is set up for. So, um, hopefully, that gives you a little bit of insight into the Game Watcher board and uh, how it operates. And uh, thanks for watching.